today we're going to continue to talk about law of sines. Now, if, let's imagine that we have a triangle, and it looks kind of like this. Oops. On today's assignment, all of the triangles are going to, you're going to be given two sides and one of the angles. I just want to point out that you can't always find a missing angle. This time we're going to be looking for a missing angle. You can't always find that missing angle using law of sines. We're going to talk about something next week called law of cosines that will help in some of the situations. I'm going to label this ABC. And let's talk about what situation might not work. So for instance, let's say that we're given this angle right here. Let's say that, let's say this one's 30 yards. This is the side. This one is 35 yards. And let's say that this was it looks obtuse. Let's say that this was um, about 100 degrees. Okay, now if this is what you're given. It definitely defines a triangle, and it can't be any other triangle because side, angle, side. However, if you look at what you're given, so this is little b right here. And let's say that you want to find another angle. Maybe this one right here. The problem is that we don't have anything that matches up. So 100 degrees, we're not given little b, so that's not going to work. Angle A is across from, well, we don't have angle A. So angle A, this is little a right here. You can see that those ones don't match up because we're not given angle A. And then angle C is what we're looking for, so of course you want to line that up with 30 yards. But we really can't use the information, we can't use a formula of the law of signs or the theorem of the law of signs for this. But let's talk about what we could do. So let's say we weren't given this angle. Let's say that instead we were given this angle over here, which is 42 degrees. And let's just see if we can use the rule we talked about yesterday for that. So what you have to have is one pair of things that match up. So you have to be given an angle and a side across from it in order to use a law of sines. And it looks like we have because large A right here, 42 degrees, lines up with little a right here, 35 yards, which is the one that makes it so that we can use the law of sines. Because once again, the law of sines is A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. So you have to have one of these things complete in order to use it. But never fear, if you don't have one of those complete, you will be able to use the law of cosines, which we'll talk about next week. Now, let's set this up. Remember how I talked about that these could also be flip-flop. So you could have sine of A on top, little a on the bottom depending on what your unknown is. Since, our un since we're, we're looking for, I forgot to write up here, we'll call this number one, and the instructions say to find measure of angle C. Find measure angle C. That just means measure of, quick review from geometry, angle C. I'll put a little question mark there so we know that's what we're looking for. So what we're looking for is angle C. So that's going to be this right here, sine of C. So I'm going to put sine of C on top. It helps to have our unknown on top, makes the calculating just a little bit easier. And that matches up with, this is C across from C, like that. 30 yards. Which equals, let's find our pair that match up. 42 degrees matches up with 35 yards. So sine of 42 degrees matches up with 35 yards. Let's solve this theoretically for C by multiplying both sides by 30. The most that you can do theoretically before you punch in your calculator, the more accurate your answer will be. Sine C equals 
30 times sine of 42 degrees. Let me put this in parentheses to remind us that we've got to punch it into the calculator. 35. Now, the problem is sine of C is still kind of entangled in here. Now, the way we, the inverse operation is represented by this symbol right here, sine negative 1, like that. So you could say C equals sine of negative 1. Whatever we get for this is basically going to be what we find the sine of negative 1. We don't really feel like rewriting that whole thing. Let's punch into our calculator now. Okay, sine of 42. we got to try to remember this. So go over to the other calculator. Okay. Yeah, make sure that you're in degrees, not radians. This calculator is already set in degrees. And we're going to type in sine of 42. And on my calculator, I type in the 42 first, and I hit sign. And now I'm going to multiply that by 30, which is this long number here. And I'm going to divide by 35. To get this long number, and now I'm going to find the inverse sign. And I am going to actually copy this down since it's notes, but you don't have to actually copy this step. 0.5735. Just so you see formally how you would write that. And now we'll find the inverse sign. Make sure you switch your calculator. If you have this type, switch it to second. And you'll see that it switches instead of sign, it says sign to the negative one, which means we're finding the inverse sign, and it's 34.99. I'm going to round that to 35 degrees. Now most of these round it to the nearest tenth, but you can see this one's so close to 35. When you round to the nearest tenth, it's actually 35. Okay, let's do one more of that type of problem. Bring our little chart down with us. Okay, so on number two, let's draw another triangle. And it's going to look kind of similar. Have an angle like this. Well, the sides like that. So to make it straight. And slide down here. And the triangles can be all different directions. The important part is noticing what matches up. So we've got A, B, and C. You're given this angle, 114 degrees. And this time you're given this side, 18 inches. And we're given side AB, which is 39 inches. Okay, so you get that set up on your assignment. And it technically says find measure of angle B. Measure of angle B is our unknown, which I'll kind of put a little question mark there help us focus on it. Okay, let's just see what we're given. It looks like across from angle C is going to be little c, which is 39 inches. Across from angle B, it's a little hard to see because this triangle is kind of funky shaped. But draw straight through, and wherever it goes to is little b. So little b is 18 inches. And little a would be over here. However, little a is not important because we already have something that matches up. We already have 114 and 39, which are across from each other. Start with your unknown, which is sine of b. Now, we want to know what angle b is. Matches up with 18 inches. And that's the same as sine of 114, which is c. So we have to match it up with little c, which is 39. Multiply both sides by 18. We want to get this by itself.
Okay, now it's already ready for us to punch into the calculator. So, go over to the other screen, clear it. And we're not into second anymore. Now we actually need the sine function. So I'm going to say sine of 114 times 18. That's the top of the fraction. And I'm going to divide by the bottom. And I get 0 0.42163, blah, 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 going on forever. Okay, so I'm just going to, just to keep the notes all together, I'm going to write it on the other page, 0 0.4216. And that would mean angle B equals this amount here, which we're going to punch into your calculator. It's more accurate if you don't have to recopy it. So, for instance, having this long chain of numbers will be more accurate. Let's say second sine, and you get 24.9. 24.9 degrees, and that tells us the actual angle of that missing side. So that's what we're doing today, and just message me if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.